Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, we added in our mobile controls. So that's these buttons down here, left and right, for obviously moving left and right. And the up arrow fires a bullet. Simple stuff. Now in this episode, we're going to look at game continuation. Wherein, when we kill all of our aliens, we'll increment our score exponentially, we'll give ourselves a good few thousand points for completing the level, and then we'll spawn in another set of aliens to kill. Again, this is going to be really simple stuff, this one shouldn't take too long at all, so we'll jump straight into it. So we've managed to come this far in our game's development without needing a generic game controller or game manager script. That is about to change. For our wave control and several other functions, we're going to want a generic singleton instance of a manager script. So let's get this over and done with and we'll create our manager. So we'll create a new C sharp script. Just call this game manager. And we'll open this up in Visual Studio. We won't be needing a starting update and we'll be creating a singleton instance out of this script. And again, if you want a bit of a more detailed overview of singletons, I do have a tutorial dedicated to those on my channel, so make sure you go and check that one out. But put very simply, all we need to do in this instance to make it a singleton, we will create a private static game manager. We'll call that instance. And then inside of our awake method, we'll check if instance is equal to null, We'll set instance equal to this, or else we'll destroy the game object itself. Simple as that. So what do we want to keep a reference of in our game manager script for a wave control? Well, we're going to have a public game object array, and this is going to be all of our alien sets. Now when I say alien sets, I mean this entire group would be one set. So we could create as many of these designs as we like. We could uh, create a circular design, could create a full rectangle, whatever you like. And whenever we spawn a new wave, we'll pick one at random. So we'll leave that as it is for now. We also want a private game object, and that's going to be our current set, so the currently active set that we have in game. And finally, one more, we need a private vector 2, which is going to be the spawn position for a new alien set, our alien group. So we'll set this to a new vector 2, and we'll just initialize it with zeros for now until we work out our actual position. Now, for the actual wave spawning, we're going to want to use a core routine. So like we did before, we're going to need the System dot collections namespace, and under our awake method, we'll create a private i enumerator, and we'll call this spawn wave. But we want to be able to call a method from anywhere in a project that will spawn the wave. We don't want to have to start a core routine from another script. So the way that we can do this is we'll have a public static void spawn new wave. And all this is going to do, it's going to call instance dot start core routine, and we'll call the instance spawn wave. So effectively, we'll start our core routine from anywhere else in the project by calling spawn new wave, which will then start our core routine for us. So what's the first thing we want to do? We want to check if our current set is not equal to null, so we actually have a game object active. We want to destroy it, so we'll destroy current set. And the reason we want to do that is because if we kill all the enemies on screen, all that's going to do is destroy the individual aliens inside the alien parent. We'll still have this alien parent active in the game, and we don't want that anymore because there's no use for it. Like I say, we'll just get rid of that empty game object. After we do that, we'll put our yield statement in. As you remember, we always need a yield statement inside of a core routine. So we'll yield return new, and we'll use wait for seconds again. And we'll wait for three seconds before we spawn in a new wave. 
So to spawn our new wave, all we'll need to do is set current set equal to instantiate all alien sets, and we'll get a random dot range between zero and all alien sets dot length. And we'll spawn that at our spawn position. And same as always, we'll use quaternion dot identity because we don't want to affect the rotation when we spawn it. This is a very useful way of doing things as well. I don't often see many tutorials showing this way. I could be wrong. I could be watching the wrong tutorials. But what this will do in one line, we set a local reference to whatever we're instantiating as we instantiate it rather than just doing a standard instantiation of the game object. So after we've done that, the final thing is to call a UI manager and update the wave counter on screen. Now, as you remember in our UI tutorial, if we can find it, update wave, we'll just increment our local copy of our wave by one and then update the on screen text. So. Next up, we want to find out what we want our spawn position to be. So if we jump down and grab our alien parent, if we just scroll this up and take it out of view of the camera, we can see that approximately positive 10 on the Y is where we want to be spawning. So we can open this up, we'll leave it as zero on the X and we'll put in 10 on the Y. And now what this means is we can actually delete our parent object. But first, we're going to want to make a prefab out of this. We'll just create a new folder inside of our prefabs and we'll call it alien sets. Rename this to alien set 01 and drag that in and create a prefab out of it. So we can then delete alien set so we have nothing in whatsoever and if we put in a get empty game object and we'll just call this a game manager and drag and drop our game manager script onto it we can see that we have an array of alien sets we put in our set and then inside of our game manager for now in the start method we can just call spawn new wave. So if we save that and play the game, we should see when we actually start our game, a block will instantiate up at the top here. And they do. Perfect. But as you could see, they stayed outside of the camera view and they're just doing the generic movements left and right. We want it as it spawns to drop in relatively quickly to a final position and then start its standard movements. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we can control this inside of our alien manager script, alien master script rather, and we'll start by adding in a private bool entering. And we'll set this to true by default rather than false. So whenever our alien master spawns in, we will be marked as entering the play area by default. We also want one more constant variable in here, so that will be a private const float start y. And what that's going to be is that's going to be the y value that the alien set needs to reach before we start doing our generic left and right movements. So if we just throw this back in, we can see whereabouts we actually want our aliens to start the generic movements and where we've actually spawned in is quite a good position. So just to make it a little bit nicer looking, we'll make this 1.15 and we'll set start y equal to 1.15f. And just so we don't end up with two of our sets in the game, we'll delete that again. Now inside of our update method, currently we're just incrementing our timers and then moving, shooting or spawning the mothership by default. But we only want to do this when we're not entering the play area. So we'll surround this with an if statement. And if we're entering, so if we've just spawned this wave and it's outside of the camera's view, we'll set transform.translate 
vector two dot down times time dot delta time times and we'll just give it a, a relatively fast speed so we'll just spawn us in at 10 units per second and then inside here we'll check if our transform dot position dot y is less than or equal to our start y we'll set enter in equal to false and then we'll wrap all of our original code inside the else statement so now when we spawn in, we should quickly drop down from the top into the camera view. When we reach our desired Y position, we'll set enter into false, which will mean we'll start hitting our else statement and the game will continue as it previously did. So let's see if this is working. So if we notice over in the scene view, we spawn, we drop in, and the second we reach where we need to be, the standard functions start. So now to spawn a new wave whenever we destroy every one of our aliens, all we need to do is we'll open up our individual alien script. And before we destroy the object itself, we'll check if the alien master dot all aliens dot count is equal to zero. So in other words, if we've destroyed every one of the aliens, we'll call a game manager dot spawn new wave. So that should take care of all of that for us. If we kill the last enemy, we'll spawn a new wave, which will in turn destroy the current set that we have and spawn in a new set three seconds later. So we can test this, but to make this a little bit easier, we'll create a new set with less enemies just for now. So if we drag in our first alien set and unpack it from the prefab so we don't amend this accidentally, We'll call this one alien set two and we can go in and delete some of our aliens so let's say we we'll just leave the first row of aliens as they are we can create a prefab out of this delete this from our scene and then inside of our game manager we'll drag alien set two in so now we should have a 50 50 chance of spawning either one and we do and it spawned our easier one so we'll try and destroy every one of our aliens here and we have one left Ooh. so we've destroyed all of them our alien parent has disappeared and our next wave spawns in three seconds later and again we've decided that uh, we're going to spawn the easier one. Let's see if we can get the uh, the second one. No, maybe not. It will work. I'm just getting uh, bad luck there. So as you can see, we've already got a um, an infinite running game just by doing that. And one thing I didn't check, we'll double check, make sure our wave counter interacts correctly. Now I get this one. There we go, we can see that it works though because it's incremented from zero at the start up to one. And that's about us done for this episode. As you can see, very simple, like I said, just adding a simple game manager in that'll spawn in a new wave as and when we need one. In the next video, we're going to deviate from the original Space Invaders a little bit by adding in some pickups. So we're going to add in a health pickup, an extra life pickup, and some coins. Again, really simple stuff, but it just adds that extra layer of depth into your game and gives your players something to fight for. So make sure you check out the next video, and I'll see you over there.